All right, uh, welcome to the fourth video on the IGCC um, electricity revision series that I'm trying to do uh, now that the exam is getting closer. Um, this is uh, the first couple of objectives that I wanted to have a look at. Uh, I wanted to once again thank uh, the teacher uh, who, who made this presentation or this PowerPoint. Uh, I downloaded it from the TES website. Um, and I'm very grateful for it. I think it's very useful for the for the students. So thank you if you're watching this, uh, and if you aren't, also thank you. Anyway, okay. So let's start with the the next part of this. Hopefully, there's only one or two videos left. Um, let's see uh, the objectives. Identify that an increasing an increase in resistance will reduce the electrical current. That's the first thing we're going to have a look at. Then explain how the resistance of light-dependent resistors and thermistors change with light intensity and temperature. And finally, uh, look at and think about Ohm's law. So, without further ado, let's move on to the first part. It says, which of these materials will have the highest resistance. Hopefully, looking at these, you know that wood has the electrons very much stuck to the atoms and unfree to move, while metals have a sea of free electrons which are capable of moving and therefore carrying currents. Um, so the highest resistance will be the wood and the lowest resistance will be the better conductor, which is the metal. The wood normally we would call an insulator. This is for an investigation that we're going to jump. So what is resistance? Resistance is anything that will resist a current, i.e. it makes it harder for the electricity to flow. It is measured in ohms, there's a symbol, it's a Greek letter, and it has the symbol R for resistance. Don't think that it's a bad thing, um, necessarily. A lot of people think, well, because it doesn't let the, it makes it hard for the electricity to flow, it must be a bad thing and we always should avoid it, blah blah blah. It's not like that. I'll try to explain a little bit of why it's not like that. If, uh, say you have your car battery which has 12 volts and you have a set of parallel circuits or ser parallel branches uh, linked up to that, so here you have, I don't know, your air conditioning unit, and there you have your your lamps at the, at the front of your car and here you have your radio and all of that and they're all connected in parallel to your battery resistances are used to tell how much to tell the electrons in a way how much current you want through each one so for example the light bulbs are going to need less electricity than the uh, motor needs to to start turning so here this could be your motor and it needs a lot of current in the motor to start turning but it needs much less for the headlamp so you have a resistor here to tell the current not to go so much through this one to go much more through the other circuit air conditioning again won't need as much as the motor and the radio even less so by using different size resistors which are not that that's not a symbol i just drew them late but the resistance symbol is like this by using different size resistors you can govern how much current goes through each branch and that's really useful because you don't want to be changing or using different batteries for each thing you can use one same battery and with the resistors you tell the charge which way to go and how much of it to go each way hopefully that makes sense okay having said that let's look at a little puzzle as in the previous video, please try to do this on your own before I now proceed to do it. So pause my, uh, the video right now and have a go at this and uh, then we will have a quick think about it if you don't even have a pen or a pencil with you and um, an, a notebook and then play it again in a sec when you've had a go at it. Okay. So Let's have a look at this. All components in electrical circuits have something, even the something. So, what's the topic here? Resistance. So probably that's what goes in there. Resistance. All components in uh, components in electrical circuits have resistance, even the. What is very unlikely? If it says even, it means it's unlikely, right? What's unlikely to have resistance? Mm, decrease, low, no. Increase, no. Thick, series, no. Bulbs, no. Bulbs, normal component, so that's okay to have resistance. Filament, 
wires. That makes sense. The wires usually are regarded to have a zero resistance, but they have a little bit of resistance, even if they're made of copper, which is a very good conductor. So all compon components in electrical circuits have resistance, even the wires. Some components, like something, have a something resistance. I would say filaments. Actually, the bulb is going to be better there, I think. Filaments is for later. The So some components, like bulbs, for example, a bulb, have a high resistance, which is over here. The filament wire in the bulb, again, makes it harder for the current to flow. Putting more bulbs in series will increase the resistance. Here's the series. And do something to the current. Well, if it increases the resistance, it is going to decrease the current. Actually, I would probably make a correction here so that we use all the words. I would say, instead of the filament wire, I would say the thin wire. Because filaments are very thin. The thin wire in the filament makes it harder for the current to flow. Thin wires make it hard for the current to flow and thick wires make it easier. Okay, so in total it would be all components in electrical circuits have resistance, even the wires. Some components, like here we said bulbs, have a high resistance. The thin wire in the filament makes it harder for the current to flow. Putting more bulbs in series will increase the resistance and decrease the current. To measure small current, it's best to use a millimeter, which has to be placed in series. Like we said in the other videos, they always go in series. And a millimeter just means that it measures thousands of an amp instead of just straight amps. Diodes. Pause it for a sec if you want to think about this for a bit. The diode only lets currents flow in one direction. It has a very high resistance in the other direction. So here is the one direction. So uh, if we apply the potential difference in one direction, which means we're trying to force the current to go, for example, to the left or clockwise or whatever, then the resistance is so high that it doesn't matter how big you make the potential difference, uh, it doesn't get any current flowing. But in the other direction, very quickly, as soon as you get to this potential, which here appears as 0.6 volts, the resistance of the diode suddenly decreases a lot and suddenly you get a, an increase in the current. And it's a straight line, so it starts following even Ohm's law there. Okay, so diodes are used for whenever you want the current to go in one direction, but never in the other. So it's kind of a safety mechanism. Uh, of sorts. What about light dependent resistors? Well, they have a very good name. The resistance changes depending on how much light falls on them. So, pause this now if you want to do the exercise before I, I go into it. It says light dependent resistors something have a something resistance in the dark. Light dependent resistors in brackets another name for them, which is LDRs, there they are, LDRs, have a high resistance in the dark, because when the, the light falls on them, the resistance goes down. So we use LDRs and we used high now. It says, when something shines on the LDR, light, it has a low resistance. This makes it easier for the current to flow. And that's all the words that we had to use. It 
the misters again pause it now if you want to have a go at it okay thermistors when they're cold let's see when they're cold the thermistor has a high resistance so we used high when they warm up or heat up when they heat up they have a low resistance making it easier for the current to flow that makes sense the increase in temperature increases the number of free electrons available so as we increase the temperature the free electrons become there's more free electrons available and therefore it becomes a better conductor that should be uh, common sense hopefully let's uh, compare what's going on here it says there's a light dependent resistor here where the resistance decreases as the light intensity increases and the thermistor does exactly the same thing but the thermistor's resistance decreases when the temperature increases so here there's amount of light increasing and here's temperature increasing and in both cases in one case the LDR and the other the thermistor the resistance goes down and if you plotted the current then you'd see that the current goes up for a particular voltage since the resistance is going down okay a, a bit uh, quick revision on graphs uh, if you look at this you can see hopefully this is a graph y is equal to 2x and how do we find the gradient of a graph well it's the rise divided by the run the rise here is 12 and the run is 6 because of the scales right you've got to read it on the axes uh, even though this looks less high than, than that and so if we wanted to know the gradient we divide 12 by 6 the so rise divided by the run and we get a gradient of 2 and that you can see here also because y is equal to mx plus c uh, this would be the m that is the x and the c doesn't appear because it's 0 it's the y intercept okay why is that useful before we get there let's look at another example which is the gradient here would be 3 for the rise divided by 6 so the gradient here would be a half so this is y is equal to half x and you can see the half there is the gradient from the y is equal to mx plus c uh, equation also what happens with resistance well you also get a straight line so your equation that before was y is equal to mx plus c is now as you can see here um, a little bit different after you've taken results down and you've drawn a line you can find the gradient of the graph that you've drawn and you can figure out things about the resistance using that in this case since the potential difference is on the y-axis and the current is in the x-axis and uh, v divided by i is you should know v is equal to i r let me just do that over here you should know that v is equal to i r from ohm's law that means that the resistance is equal to V over I right or you, if you want to draw it in the same in the same way then then R is, is here and V over I so I've just divided by I okay so what's uh, what does that mean about the graph well then the rise is the V and the run is the I so if you do V divided by I which is the gradient you're gonna get R in other words R is the gradient of this graph sometimes you see the plot the other way around and then it would be 1 over r but in this case where v is in the y-axis the gradient would be exactly equal to the resistance of that particular wire on which you did the experiment so it says here general equation for a straight line is y is equal to mx plus c you should know that from your maths the voltage is the y-axis in this case the x is represented by the current and the m is the gradient and the c is the y-intercept so here it says the gradient is also equal to the resistance therefore v is equal to i r which is ohm's law and he realized that there, there were straight lines for lots of materials each one with a different gradient so that's how he came up with the idea of resistance and different materials had a different resistance and therefore they would allow more current for the same potential difference or EMF applied through them and so forth 
So just a few questions of uh, to do as practice in using Ohm's law. So here's Ohm's law v is equal to i r. So we're gonna look through a couple of these questions quickly. I've just run out of paper. Let's see if I can scroll up a little bit to the beginning of the other side. What is the resistance of the following? A bulb with a voltage of 3 volts and a current of 1 amp. Easy peasy, if the equation is V is equal to IR, it means that R is equal to V over I. And therefore, a bulb with 3 volts and 1 amp will be over 1, will be equal to 3 ohms, which is the unit for resistance. Okay, question 2 says a resistor with a voltage of 12 volts and a current of 3 amps. So it's going to be 12 over 3. And therefore that will be 4 ohms will be the resistance of that resistor. Then there's a diode with a voltage of 240 volts and a current of 40 amps. So then you divide 240 volts by 40 amps and 24 divided by 4 is 6. So this is going to be also 6. You cancel the tens, comes out to be 6 ohms of resistance. A diode, uh, not a thermistor with a current of 0 0.5 amps and a voltage of 10 volts. So they give you the voltage second, so they're trying to trick you, voltage and then divided by 0 0.5 amps. The current goes at the bottom. When you divide something by 0 0.5, it's like multiplying by 2. So you get a resistance of 20 ohms. So these were really easy, it's using Ohm's law to find the resistance of something when they give you both the voltage and the current. So this is uh, one of the last things I wanted to say, that the resistance of a, of a wire increases normally uh, if it's not a thermistor, which behaves in the opposite way. Most wires, um, or most uh, materials, when they heat up the resistance increases. So look what's happening here. You are, uh, increase the potential difference across the, the, you know, the EMF, uh, of the battery and as you do that the potential difference through the wire increases and as that increases the current increases pretty much in a straight line according to Ohm's law but what happens is as the current starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger by the time it's around here the material is starting to get hot so what's happening is that all the atoms um, are start jiggling around all over the place in the atom in the inside of the wire so much that when the poor electrons are trying to to move and get go through they now interact much more with the atoms they have a much tighter relationship they keep bumping into them more often so it slows them down and so the resistance increases what happens when that happens well if the gradient was the resistance uh, related to the resistance in this case and the gradient is a straight line it means that the gradient is always the same so it means the resistance is always the same throughout all of this part but then when the resistance starts changing what happens it starts curving you start to get less current for the same increase in potential difference so this starts curving like that so whenever you see a wire or a filament light bulb uh, this it will eventually get to this point where it starts curving right and with a wire this is happens quite at quite a high current because the wire is a very good conductor but with a something like a filament which is very thin and has a high resistance this is what you get. You get a much shorter linear section and then very quickly starts curving. As it, as it heats up, the resistance increases. And actually you want the filament to do that because you want it to heat up as much as possible to be able to give light. The hotter it gets, the more light it gives and that's the job of a, of a bulb, right? So what's the, the equation governing this? Is po Power is equal to IV. As you increase I, and the power gets bigger and bigger and bigger and the um, energy dropped by the charge as it goes through your light bulb starts to get uh, bigger and bigger and so this heats up a lot it's a thin wire with a high resistance and so it starts glowing and shining and giving uh, away light and therefore doing its job properly so that's something that you wanted to do this is not bad news it's, it's useful that's why we choose filaments to have a high resistance and to be very thin wires the axis the order of the axis matters if you have v here and i here the curve goes like that and if you have i here and v here 
the curve goes like this. Okay, it makes sense that the current gets less and less, it stops growing as much when the resistance increases. And in this set of axes it looks the other way around, it's, it curves like this because it's the current here that doesn't increase very much more, even though you keep increasing the potential difference more and more and more, the current kind of doesn't go above a certain value or, or, or just increases more and more slowly as you continue there. Okay, so that was it uh, for now, and hopefully this uh, series of four videos have been a good refresher for the electricity topic, and um, good luck with your revision and the exams, I'm sure you do very well, just work very hard um, in all the subjects and try to enjoy it at the same time. Alright, take care.